Okay, so we're finally talking about um, my Anime North 2019 pickups in a uh, gaming pickups, you know, rather than the uh, video I made, um, you know, a few months ago, basically. Uh, and I think I actually did a pretty good job talking about my pickups uh, then in that video, so I I'll try to keep this as short as I can. Uh, got an original Game Boy, long story short. The first day I saw one for 70 bucks, and I was going to go back the next day and try and talk them down to 60 for it. Uh, but later, I actually found one that was um, 50 bucks, and I talked them down to 45. And um, yeah, that's that. I finally got an original Game Boy. I'd want one, you know. It's just that it was really hard to actually like sit down and convince myself to get it. But it's good because you know you need at least a Game Boy, a Game Boy Color, and a Game Boy Advance, and of course a Game Boy Advance SP. Maybe one day I'll get the other Game Boy models, but I can tell you that's not a priority at the moment. Uh, the sound on it is kind of iffy, you know, you just kind of have to like fuck around with it and hope for the best. And, uh, but other than that, it works great, you know, I'm glad that like, um, you know, the buttons feel decent. I'm glad that the screen isn't too fucked up. It was just a good purchase overall at the right price, and it's very nice to finally have an original Game Boy. And the convention was the best way I was going to get one. Of course, I picked up an original Game Boy game while I was there. Donkey Kong Land 2. Obviously, you know, a derivative of Donkey Kong Country 2 on the Super Nintendo, but, you know, it's not the same game. But on a Game Boy, it actually, of course, has its own unique levels, as I'm sure you probably know. Um, it's pretty damn fun. I haven't played this nearly as much. Like, I completed... Uh, the third one on the Game Boy Color Japan exclusive remake, uh, Donkey Kong GB, Dinky Kong, and Dixie Kong, not the original Donkey Kong Land 3. And I did beat the original Donkey Kong Land, you know, the first one. Haven't played a ton of this, but it is, it seems to be, you know, pretty damn good, you know. If you like Donkey Kong Country 2, you'll like this almost just as much, I feel. The music is definitely top notch. Probably my favorite soundtrack out of the three, actually. Really good stuff. Again, I wish I was able to give this a little more attention, but it's definitely great to have, uh, for sure. I'm following it up with Game Boy Advance. I got Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo. Well, actually, it says Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo on the title screen, but on the cartridge and on the box, it just says Super Puzzle Fighter 2. You might know about this, maybe. Do you know about it? What do you know? You might know it as a PS1, maybe even a Saturn game. Here it is on Game Boy Advance. Um, I did, you know, I had a, you know, Gilgatex, a Twitch streamer who's, you know, on a challenge to beat every uh, North American uh, Game Boy Advance game. I had him uh, play through this and beat it, you know, it was relatively short. And, you know, it's this basic idea of just, you know, do like the arcade mode, whatever. You face against off like eight opponents and that's that. It is a really fun game, you know, it's very s satisfying to rank up, you know, combos and whatnot, and it's even easier to rank up, like, combos and send off, like, garbage blocks uh, to the opposing side than, say, uh, Puyo Puyo. So it's kind of like Puyo Puyo, but, you know, not quite. A little more easier, I think, is the best way to describe it. But absolutely a great game, for sure. Uh, let's see, what's next? Um, how about uh, the only N64 game I picked up at there? Cyber Tiger. Yeah, it's one of six golf games on the N64, and uh, I couldn't really get into it. You know, I, I got a kick out of its, you know, mechan swinging mechanic of how, you know, you pull back the joystick and wing it forward. You know, that acts as your golf club and your power meter. Uh, but I just really couldn't get into this. It's, you know, it's no Mario Golf. I, it, it's not even YLA Country Club True Golf Classics. Or YLA Country Club, however the fuck that's pronounced. Um... Maybe it's even better than YLA Country Club True Golf Classics, in your view. But yeah, that's that. You know, it's got, like, some gimmicks and some other things and whatnot, but I don't know. I didn't get into it too much. Uh, well, we're on the topic of sports games. How about Mario Sports Mix on the Wii? I remember vividly so much, especially when this came out. Day one, all the announcements, all that, all those years ago, and, uh, well, here now I finally have it. Um, it's, it's fun, you know, uh, it's interesting, of course, it's a combination of, uh, basketball, volleyball, hockey, and dodgeball. Um, 
you know, because I guess they just didn't really feel like making separate games. You know, th there's stuff here, you know, of course you got your basic exhibition, your multiplayer modes, and your, you know, your tournaments. I guess it would have been an interesting take to see, obviously, these games as separate games. And, of course, in the case of basketball, we did see it as a separate game in uh, Mario Hoops 3-on-3 3 3 on the DS. Um, and, you know, volleyball was like a mini game in either Mario Party 4 or 5, but, you know, that's not saying much. And hockey and dodgeball, I can't imagine any instance that Mario's ever played that, but I could be wrong. Um, but yeah, it is pretty fun. It, it, it's neat that they were, it's a good idea that they, you know, obviously put them all together, but imagine if they were separate games, there'd maybe be a little more, you know, effort and content put in them. Not saying that they're lacking in effort. You know, it's definitely, like, workable for what it is. Uh, I think I had the most fun with uh, volleyball and hockey. Basketball was not as, um, uh, it doesn't have as much meat to it as, like, Mario Hoops 3 on 3 and dodgeball. Dodgeball's, you know, it's interesting. It's definitely d different compared to the other ones. Uh, but I will say also the Koopa Troopa Beach, you know, music in this. It's a fucking banger. Listen to it after you're done watching this video. Uh, Crash Team Racing on PS1. Of course, a very, you know, beloved uh, kart racer. And with the remake co that came out recently... Uh, and then they added microtransactions because they're fucking greedy, scumbag, cock-sucking fucking bitches. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, it took me a s little minute or two to get used to the, you know, the way you boost in this game. But when you do, it's very much satisfying. I can definitely see why people uh, like this game so much. It's just so much fun power sliding and, you know, boosting around and building up the boost uh around the corners, especially with its, you know, level design and whatnot, it very much is a quality game. I will get the remake at some point, even despite the uh, whole microtransactions bullshit. Maybe I'll just have to buy it used or something because, you know, yeah, you know, uh, for obvious reasons, I'm sure. If it's not obvious, it's because, you know, you don't want to fucking support a game with stupid microtransactions, but you want to play the fucking game. Because the, the remake... I do like how it actually includes uh, tracks from Crash Nitro Kart, but even with that said, I would still get Crash Nitro Kart on the GameCube at some point. But of course, absolutely, you know, just classic right here. And, you know, it was a good year to buy it, you know. Because I did buy the first three Crash games back in 2014 on the PS1, and here we are five years later, and I finally bought another Crash on PS1. We'll see about Crash Bash one of these days. Um... Well, I guess while we're on the topic of racing, how about Asphalt 2 Urban GT on the DS? It looked, you know, like a pretty good game, and uh, for years the only two racing games I had on the DS were Mario Kart DS and Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing, so this was very cool to get. It's a pretty easy game, but I cannot lie, it is entertaining. It's just fun around to, you know, fuck around on the tracks, boost, you know, pick almost any vehicle combination and, you know, color... And just race around. It's very entertaining, even if it's easy. I'm glad that I was actually I got this game. I don't know if I'd actually tempt any sort of like career or anything like that or whatever you know the main mode of this game is. Because literally, I just picked single race tracks and just fucked around and I had a good time. So yeah. Uh, extra Extreme G Racing Association on the GameCube. This was the last Extreme G game and just the last one I needed unless I decide to get this the PS2 and Xbox versions of this and like the PS2 version of Extreme G3 and the PC version of Extreme G2 but uh I don't know I, I didn't really get into this again it's another one of those fucking racing games that just locks you behind so many things from the start but even then I didn't find this nearly as uh, gripping as the first three games but there's definitely some sort of you know entertainment and quality to be quality to be had with it. I think that's the best way I can uh, put it. I, I don't know. I'll definitely have to give this game another shot. You know, some more time. I mean, I've had it all these months, but you know, yeah. Volleyball, black box volleyball for the NES. It's a uh, well, it's a black black box game, and you know. It's one of the handful of volleyball games on the NES. It's okay. It, it plays decently well. It's no Super Spike V-Ball, but it's it's manageable. You know, 
It's even got music during the game, so how about that, you know? Fucking uh, tennis, baseball, and golf didn't have music. Soccer did. Uh, Ten-yard fight didn't. But yeah, it, it's an okay game. It's a slightly uncommon one, and it's also really hard to find this in box, so... Um, yeah, take that for what it's worth. Uh, let's see. Um, I believe this is the uh, last one. This is Super Bomberman R for the Switch. Uh, how long is the video? Wow, we're not making very good time at all, are we? Fuck. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, Super Bomberman R on Switch. It's um, It was a launch title, I'm sure, as you may know. You know it came out March 3rd, 2017. You know... Uh, what else? Fuck. Um, okay, so, this is a pretty good game. It just, I got really fed up with it, you know. Because around the second world, I got really fed up with actually trying to beat it. Because the whole idea is, you know, you got ten stages and then a boss. If you lose all your lives at any point, you obviously go back to start. You can continue if you have more coins. But the thing is, it, the times I've played it, I felt truly that it should be, you know, it should be easy to fucking just sit down and, you know, beat a world, you know, one day and then move on. I spent, like, three fucking hours on the second world and I kept dying to the boss and I was just like, you know, I'm fucking done with this for now. This is going on a indefinite hiatus. Uh, and it seems that way, too, because, again, this is actually pretty fun. I did mention how this would probably be a far cry from the single-player adventure of Bomberman Generation on the GameCube or even just Bomberman Hero when it comes to single-player Bomberman experiences, but it is actually pretty fun, you know, the idea is just go around, kill all the enemies, or, like, collect some keys, make it to the end of the stage. It works. It's just, again, I got pretty annoyed with it. It's also got eight players, so that's definitely cool. The, you know, cutscenes and the voice acting are all just charming to see. It's definitely a quality game, just, you know, I don't know when I'm going to revisit it. Alright, um, hmm... What should I talk about now? Okay, uh... How about these original Xbox games? We have NBA Live 2002. Why this? Well, because I got NBA Courtside 2002 on, a uh, GameCube recently, so I was like, let's get another NBA game with 2002 in the title, even though, like, of course, this came out in 2001, not 2002. I don't think this version was rated as high on Game FAQs as uh, the PS2 and PS1 versions, and I'm not sure why. I thought this would have been the best version, being it's on original Xbox. Uh, and that's really all much I can say about it. I played a game of it. I built, I think I won a game of it, actually. It's not bad. It says on the back here, play as or against Michael Jordan. It's another cheap-ass game on the original Xbox. A lot of original Xbox stuff is cheap. Now, if only more of it worked on the 360. Then we got Project Gotham Racing. Um, unfortunately, this doesn't seem to boot up on my 360, and this isn't because of compatibility issues or because of my Xbox 360 dying, or even the disc. You know, the disc is in perfectly fine shape. I looked at it. I even gave it a bit of a clean, and uh, again, it just didn't boot up. I could try it again recently, but I don't know what the fuck's changed after the weeks I've had this, but... Yeah, I guess I probably just have to buy another disc uh, for this at some point and hope for the best. Um, you know, because even so, I, I'm not sh I, wouldn't, I probably wouldn't get in this game a ton, but it was, it'd be a good, you know, fun little distraction and just thing to mess around with, you know, as one of the more, you know, well-known and premier games on the original Xbox. But, yeah, unfortunately I can't really play that. It wouldn't start up, so I guess we'll just have to get more. Uh, another one, I should say. How are we doing on time? 14 minutes, huh? Fuck. Uh. Let's see. Um. Nemesis on the original Game Boy. This is a uh, August pickup, so yeah. I've had my eye on this ever since it was mentioned in a Game Sack's um, original Game Boy episode, and I've also had my eye on the other Gradius game, a Gradius the Interstellar Assault on the original Game Boy. Uh, but yeah, despite this just being called Nemesis, this is very clearly a Gradius game. It has the exact same power-up system, feel, all that shit. It's fucking Gradius. Just, you know, they called it Nemesis. 
there's only five stages in it, and from the get-go, they actually let you, um, go in with 99 lives. And you can kind of see why that is, because, you know, of course, given the, uh, way Gradius is, if you're not fully powered up, you're gonna have a fucking miserable time. But in the case of this, it's a lot more manageable, because this game is so much shorter and easier than, like, Gradius on the NES, or almost any other Gradius game, really. I struggled with it only because, like, you know, dying in the second and third stage, I attempted to recollect my power-ups. But you know what I did? I reset the fucking game, and, you know, I stuck all the way with a fully powered-up ship, and I was able to beat the game just fine. You know, but, again, I was struggling just because I was attempting to beat the second and third boss with, like, fucking, you know, measly power-ups and whatnot. Don't try it. Just don't. For its time, it's fine, but obviously it's just kind of weird, you know, it's not as, um, entertaining or fulfilling of a game as other Gradius games or even other shooters, but at the same time, because it's so much, you know, more forgiving and easier, I kind of liked it, you know, I picked it up for that reason, just for something quick to pick up and play and beat, so, yeah, that's that. Um, fuck, uh... I don't know, how about, uh, more basketball shit? Why the fuck not? It's, this stuff's cheap. Uh, NBA Live 07 on PSP. Why not? Well, handheld basketball game, this one in particular, has exclusive minigames, which I tried out. There's a two-ball mode, you know, in this kind of, like, neon, bright, like, warehouse sort of area, where you had to, like, shoot, um, into the nets from certain circles on the ground with numbers. And then, you know, numbers, and if you did that, you would get points, so it's like if you shot from a circle that had, like, you know, three point the number three on it, you would get three points. And then there was this, like, weird one where, you know, you hold the PSP, like, fucking vertically, and you press the D-pad and certain arrows and buttons, it's weird. Main core game plays well, so, yeah. It's got ESPN, so... And PlayStation 2 system connectivity. So how about that? Um, what else? Uh, here we have International Superstar Soccer 64 on the Nintendo 64. Now, I already own this game. I picked it up back in July of last year. Early July of last year. But the thing is, I actually wanted to have it in box, and this boxed copy has been sitting at a store in my, you know, area for a long ass time. So I decided to finally pull the trigger and get it, because you know, I want it in box. It, it's a cool game, and it's you know, cool box. I kind of like this. I also really like this part too. The um, the blue area of the boxes, as you know, North American N64 boxes have like you know, blue on one side yellow on another, red on another, and then green. You know, I, I like that, actually. Um, I don't remember what I said exactly about this game a year ago and whatever gaming pickups I talked about it, but it is a really good game. It's very, you know, it, it's pretty hard, but it is, you know, still very much enjoyable. I think you maybe get the most out of it in multiplayer, but again, it is a very fun game. It's well made, and, you know, it just has some nice energy to it. The, me the menu theme of this game is just... It's great. Really. Check it out. Um, if you're an N64 fan, I'd say pick the game up. You know, even if you're not into soccer, you might get a kick out of it just because, you know, gotta enjoy all the N64 games or experiment around with them all at some point, you know? Uh, while we're on the subject of... Uh, what am I talking about while we're on the subject? This place... This subject is all over the place. But anyways, here's a... Uh, Juiced 2 Hot Import Nights for the DS. I've had my eyes on the Xbox 360 um, version of this game for a couple months now, but I ended up never picking it up, and I still will, but I figured, you know, why don't we get it on the DS? I don't get too many DS games, you know, I have like 43 DS games, and despite having the system since 2007, like, god damn, it should be more. Anyways, um, it's another racing game, you know, something I've been kind of trying to get a little bit more of on the DS. You know, uh, I don't really have a ton much to say about it. Um, it's, of course, a game that focuses a lot on drifting, you know, 
and sliding and whatnot. So it's you know a very arcade-like racer. Of course, you know you go through various like night city locations and whatnot. Which hey, I'm always down for that. Um, all in all, it's not bad. Um, I think I might have got a little more entertainment out of Asphalt 2 on the DS. This might be a better game. Uh, but yeah, it, it was fun for for a little bit, and I'll definitely play it some more. See how the console version uh, holds up, and I'll definitely give a better description, hopefully, uh, whenever I talk about that. Okay, I'm checking time again. Wow, fuck. Um, I don't know, I might have to actually do another part, just, you know, yeah, alright, we'll be right back.